Hi all, Mass Barncop from Kaiser Power Electronics. Today we're taking a look at two Cisco drop amplifiers from Cable TV Networks. I have this one and a bigger unit over here. These you normally find mounted in enclosures close to residential areas or in residential areas. And these will drop down lines of Cable TV to something like 8 to 16 houses or maybe even fewer depends on the configuration so let's get these torn down and learn something about cable tv let us first have a small talk about cable tv networks as these are discarded they are part of an older system which is being upgraded so let's look at this graphic at this graphic we can see that we have the whole head end and distribution hub and all the transport ring and optical fibers and distribution network that we have in this modern network now once we get out to the optical node and trunk RF amplifier, which can serve uh, about 500 to 2000 homes, I think this is what I have here. And then I have a line RF amplifier, which is the smaller one. But let's take a look inside, but uh, let's first um, yeah, use the Danger High Voltage Cup, which you can find in the merchandise shop on the channel. It's always good to get some coffee along with doing a teardown. The optical node has its uh, 24 volt to 65 volt AC input, has uh, fiber connections and has two outputs. It just secures the lid with a single large bolt. And as it opens up, we can see the fiber cassette sitting over here where we have the incoming fiber connecting over to the two internal fibers, which goes to a optical receiver module and a reverse transmitter module. So we'll get these out later and take a closer look. These uh, normally sport a very nice uh, power supply with shielded input or outputs here. From the schematic at the front here, we can actually see how this entire unit works. That we have two receivers, which is then switched between. Go through uh, equalizers and uh, nothing attenuated here. And just goes out to two outputs. Now the uh, reverse transmitter is what would be used in a more modern setup and I also think this is why these are getting changed that the, the more people getting on high speed cable TV internet uh, they simply need to upgrade these boxes and very few of them are actually um, on the line RF amplifiers are actually equipped with the modules for transmitting data back so they are probably very limited in upload speed as is and therefore they're getting exchanged for newer systems but here in the optical node we do have a transmitter module in the smaller line RF amplifier the lid comes off completely so that's very nice gives us a nice overview we have the cable TV input here now we are on coaxial cable and we can see we have also a just loop through so it can go to the next drop amplifier from here it uh, just goes through a chain of equalizers and small amplifiers so we have 40 db at 862 megahertz amplifier sitting here and from here it actually just goes straight to the output one and two now here we only have input and output so this would be a amplifier sitting at the last part of the chain or at least only feeding one out and not going any further so uh, by removing all these modules, we can actually pull out the front plate here and get the PCB out and take a closer look. Unfortunately here, the power supply is damaged from water, it seems. But um, let's get the modules out and take a closer look. So it is pretty straightforward, as we could also see from the diagrams here that we have uh, a lot of input filtering and then we have a very few discrete ICs sitting around here and that is of course the amplifiers and equalizers that we have seen throughout the schematic here. These are ACA 1205, 1206 and 2407. Now these were originally made by Anna Disjix in 2005 but uh, looking up later data sheets we can also see that these are now owned by Skyworks. So either have been bought up or yeah, just changed company name, sold off their products, patents, whatever. And it's the same thing we have going on over here in the trunk RF amplifier. We have the same 
small amplifiers. So not really any big huge RF amplifiers in these. These are rated for 15 to some 21 dB gain at 1 GHz bandwidth. We have a 20 to 65 megahertz dual band pass. Looking at the back, it does not look like much. And the plastic is pretty brittle. But inside we can see here it's a huge mess of inductors, capacitors and some resistors. Then we have a uh, diplexer, 65 to 87 megahertz. At the back we can actually see uh, we have some uh, well-known diplexer features that we have different lines being combined. But at the inside all we have is just inductors and a single capacitor. Here we just have a 65 to 87 megahertz. That's a diplexer as well. It's actually identical to the other one, so the markings is just different. A equalizer, 9 dB, 862 megahertz. And here you have it. That's like a uh, yeah, half an inductor and a smaller inductor, and some passives at the back. Here we have a does this say reverse equalizer 65 megahertz not much on the back side but chock full of resistors inductors and capacitors on the inside and at last we have a output equalizer 0 db and as we can see that is just an empty pcb so that's what also what we saw long ago in another teardown that all these 0 db attenuators well, they are just a bridge on the inside. Now the uh, modules here, they are quite interesting, the fiber modules. We have the optical receiver, which is from Scientific Atlanta, which it also states out here at the front. It's actually fun to see uh, Scientific Atlanta parts in here. This is a uh, US company back from the 50s and it was bought up by Cisco, which we could also see from the uh, front of the lid. That is, it is Cisco units, but it was bought up um, by Cisco in 2005. So uh, it's quite easy to date these back to somewhere around them taking over the company and still using parts with their name on, but still putting Cisco at the front. But not really any date marks here. So let's take a look at the optical receiver. Oh, and it's of course shielded even more. But that's just a small lid here. Yeah, so what we have here is a small receiving diode and a small amplifier. And then that just goes back onto the board. Reverse transmitter here, that's uh, quite interesting. The text on the front is uh, what makes this really interesting. We have over here the laser and the pilot. And it says if they are off, this is aging failure. And over here it says manual factory, if off. So, and then there's this, um, yeah, like volume setting plus minus. So I think you can actually um, adjust the light output of the laser diode in here. Quite interesting. So let's see what that looks like. Wow. So of course in a transmitting amplifier there is a lot more going on. Small dip switches, a lot of discrete and passive components here. And then we have a single IC sitting over here. Not uh, quite sure if I can make out what that does, but we have the output diode sitting here with a nice small Mm, ah, it does not feel like it's a socket. Seems like it's all constructed in place. The fiber cassette sitting up here. We can see it can actually be prepared so that uh, the fiber installation company can come and do all the fiber installation and the internal fibers can then be hooked up by the cable TV technician later on. So this just sits with a female to female connector here which just makes these two align up. And that is your regular fiber connectors. 
this is what you can find inside a uh, optical node and our line RF amplifier in the cable TV networks, aging back to around 2005 to 2010, I would guess. So I hope you enjoyed this teardown, learned a bit about how cable TV networks are put together and what it consists of. So until next time, consider buying a nice mug, drink some coffee, have fun, learn some electronics, and yeah, I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.